Hi, my name is Shahab Mohsen, and I'm a Senior Solutions Architect working for AWS. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use AWS Security Token Service, or AWS SDS, in your .NET application. Let's get started. AWS Security Token Service, or STS, is a web service that enables you to request temporary limited privilege credentials for AWS Identity and Access Management, or IAM, users for users that you authenticate, or the federated users. There are a couple of advantages for using temporary credentials, such as you do not have to distribute or embed long-term AWS security credentials with an application, or you can provide access to your AWS resources to users without having to define an AWS identity for them. Also, the temporary security credentials have a limited lifetime, so you do not have to rotate them or explicitly revoke them when they are no longer needed. After temporary security credentials expire, they cannot be reused. You can specify how long the credentials are valid, up to a maximum limit for sure. Temporary security credentials are short-term, as the name implies. They can be configured to last for anywhere from a few minutes to several hours. Temporary security credentials are not stored with the user, but generated dynamically and provided to the user when requested. The AWS Security Token Service STS has a default endpoint of https column slash slash sts.amazonaws.com that maps to the US East or North Virginia region. Additional regions are available and are activated by default. You can optionally send your AWS SDS request to endpoints in different AWS regions. You might choose to send your AWS SDS request to a regional endpoint for the following reasons. Either to reduce latency, which means that by making your AWS SDS calls to an endpoint that is geographically closer to your services and applications, you can access AWS SDS services with lower latency and better response. Also, you can take advantage of the built-in redundancy. By adding code to your application that switches your AWS SDS API calls to a different region, you ensure that if the first region stops responding, your application continues to operate. This redundancy is not automatic. You must build in the functionality into your code. As an alternative to using the API, you can use one of the AWS SDKs, which consists of libraries and sample code for various programming languages and platforms, such as Java, Ruby, .NET, iOS, Android, and etc. Now I'm going to show you how to use the Get Session Token API in your .NET application. Get Session Token API returns a set of temporary credentials for an AWS account or IAM user. The credentials consist of an access key ID, a secret access key, and a security token. Now, let's take a look at the demo. Now I'm in Visual Studio, and I'm going to create a new application. Let's go to File, click on File, New, Project, and I'm going to create, uh, choose one of the AWS Samples projects uh, for AWS S3 sample. And uh, this uh, sample project is already provided by the AWS Toolkit when you install it. It's called a uh, S3 Sample STS Project. Click OK. Now uh, it's going to use my uh, demo profile and the region is going to be US West Oregon. Now let me uh, open the program that CS. This project, what it does, you need to define a bucket name and a key name. The bucket name is the where the S3 repository is and the key name is the name of the file. And there is a couple of uh, functions that you are going to do in the code. There is listing buckets, creating, writing, and reading, and deleting objects in the bucket and listing the objects as well. So uh, the first thing that you need to do in this project, you need to add the proper libraries so I uh, add uh, the NuGet package, I click Browse, AWS SDK security token, and I'm going to install it. Click on Install, and it's going to add the proper NuGet package to your 
code. The second thing is that this is the for or the purpose of this demo. I'm going to add the AWS SDK.core. You don't really need this. This is only required for the purpose of this demo. I add this uh, library as well. I go back to my program.cs and I need to uh, add the proper line using amazon.sts uh, security token and using amazon.security token dot model and I'm also going to use Amazon runtime. Now we have imported the proper libraries at this stage what we need to do I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom of the code and I'm going to add uh, the piece of code that will uh, read the object uh, from the S3 bucket using a token. I've previously like provided this piece of code. You are going to see that on the screen. Uh, let me expand this a little bit so you can see like the code more clearly. The first thing I, you need to create is to create the SDS client. And this SDS client, we are going to use this client to uh, get the session token from that. And this token that we create, we, we are going to extract the credentials out of the token and pass these credentials to the S3 client. So this S3 users is the credentials we extracted from the token, and now we, uh, we create the S3 client with those credentials. And the next thing you need to do, you need to create a request. But before that, let me tell you that the duration for this token is going to be uh, 60 seconds, which means that one minute. So we need to create a request to get an object from S3. Uh, this request should get uh, should have the bucket name and key name just like any other uh, re uh, request you make to S3. And then we are going to use the S3 client to get object for the request and put the response in the response variable. So uh, this piece of code, what it does, it uses the STS token credentials and downloads a file with the identified with a key name and puts it in your desktop. So this key name is the file name and it will put the file in the desktop. Uh, remember that this key name uh, is the key name that we identified at the top of the code. Now we need to make sure that we call our, uh, we call our function uh, when the code gets uh, started. So console that right line reading an object with a token. SDS token. And then I'm going to call read object with token function that I created. Now I'm going to run the project. I think it's going to fail because I haven't set the bucket name and the key name yet. So let's just scroll up. Let's set the bucket name. Remember that uh, the bucket name, it should be a unique name worldwide. So actually, uh, and it should be only lowercase characters, so I cannot use uppercase characters. Let me go back and make sure all the characters are lowercase. Also, the key name is going to be the name of the file or object that I'm uh, storing in this repository. I'm going to call it sample file to test S3 and STS. Now, if I run my code again, it should run smoothly. It's listing the buckets. I have this bucket. and it creates bucket reads and lists the buckets and does everything. As you can see, it, it's reading an object with STS token as well. Now, to make sure that my file is downloaded, I go to my desktop and voila, this is the file. Sample file to test STS and S3. So I downloaded my file from S3 using the STS token. In this video, we looked at how to use AWS Simple Token Service or AWS STS in our .NET application. Thanks a lot for watching.